Hello! In this video, I'll show you how to set up and configure WinUAE to use your Grease Weasel board as a real floppy drive. So the first thing we'll need to do is install WinUAE. You can skip this step if you already have it installed. Once downloaded, start the installer. And at the second step, make a note of the location you install WinUAE to. It's usually C Program Files WinUAE. The next thing you'll need to do is to download the Floppy Bridge plugin from my website and install it into the Plugins folder in the WinUAE folder. If the folder doesn't exist, you'll need to create it first. Now, if you've never used WinUAE before, you're going to need some Kickstarter ROMs. The best place to buy them from is the Amiga Forever website, but I'm not going to get into that. So, now that everything is installed, let's start up WinUAE. And the best thing to do is to navigate to Quick Start, and then choose the hardware you want to emulate. Floppy Ridge works best with Kickstart 2.04 or higher, but it will work with any version. I'm going to choose to emulate an Amiga 500 Plus, as that was my first Amiga. Once selected, look at the Emulated Drives section below. Next to the Select Image File button, there's a drop down for the type of drive. If you click this, you'll see several options. And the last, which is slightly cut off, is Configure Floppy Bridge. The moment you select it, a special window will appear allowing you to configure it. The first thing I recommend you do is to tick the Check Automatically box, so you automatically get notified when new versions come out. To support a variety of potential setups, you can configure a floppy drive emulation profile. This profile can be used for different compatibility settings, or multiple drives, or multiple pieces of hardware. From here, click the Create button and the Profile Editor will appear. The first thing you'll want to do is give your profile a name. For example, Real Drive. Now we've named the drive, we need to change the driver type to Grease Weasel. Below this option is COM port. If you leave it on Auto Detect, Floppy Bridge will attempt to find the hardware automatically. If in the future you're thinking about connecting multiple real drives, then it's best to select the correct COM port here. After COM port, we have an option called Mode, and this is probably the most important. This controls how data is read from the disk and interpreted and then pushed into WinUAE. Normal Mode is the most common mode to use. It'll work with most disks and shouldn't cause any problems. It's the fastest but most compatible option. The next mode is more compatible. There may be a small number of discs, usually copy protected games, that may not work with normal mode. There aren't many, but if a game does struggle to load, switch to this mode. It's not quite as fast as normal mode because some of the speed optimizations have been switched off, which should help with that small percentage of discs that won't load. The third mode is called Turbo. This is great for anything that doesn't have copy protection. So for example, that's workbench, productivity applications, utilities, and crack games. In this mode, you can experience close to real speed, and in some situations faster than on a real machine. The fourth mode should be avoided if possible. This mode will freeze the emulator during disk access, but provides the highest level of compatibility. However, I've never found a need for it. Below mode, we have two special checkboxes. The first checkbox combines with the mode option to increase disk read speed. It attempts to determine if the track being read contains copy protected data or not. If not, it will switch to turbo mode for that track read, and if it does, it will ensure the emulator receives the most accurate copy of the data as possible. This is like the best of both worlds, and can actually massively speed up floppy disk access, but it doesn't work with every game. Until you change disks, Floppy Bridge will keep any currently read tracks in memory to use again for speed. With the second checkbox ticked, Auto Cache, Floppy Bridge will start work on reading any unread tracks while WinUAE isn't using the drive. This can help with applications that intermittently read the drive regularly. Now only the big box Amigas came with support for reading high density floppy disks, but just for you, support for this is built directly into the emulator. The disk type option allows you to force the detection of a type of disk, just in case it's guessed incorrectly. Normally you can leave it on auto, but if you're only ever going to use double density disks, then switching it to always detect every disk as double density will ever so slightly decrease the time it takes for a disk to be noticed. These options can also be useful in case the detection is incorrect. Grease Weasel can support IBM PC and Sugart drives, like real Amiga drives. For best results, I recommend using a PC floppy drive, as all the required signals are not available on the Amiga drives. Using the cable select box, you can configure the drive and where it appears on the cable. If the drive is connected without a twist on the cable, then it's drive B, else it's drive A. Once you're happy with your selections, press OK, and the new drive will appear in the list. At this point, make sure your drive is connected and powered on, and then press OK. At this point, you might get an error. If this happens, check your connections and that required drivers are installed correctly and try again. 
If the problem persists, then close all other applications and then try again. If it's all good, then you should see the WinUEE user interface switch like this. And that's it. Just hit the start button to begin WinUEE. And if all's to plan, then you should start hearing the magic drive clicking. As you can see, it's fairly straightforward to get working, and lots of fun to have it working. If you want to use AmiBerry, then most of the options are the same, but the plugin's built in, so you don't need to copy any files around. If you're curious how all of this magic works, then check out the links in the video description. While you're here, I just want to add a quick shout out to my two favourite top Patreons, both called Dave. Hi Daves, thanks for supporting me, and if you want to support me too, then consider sending me a thanks via PayPal, or maybe also support me on Patreon too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.